What's up, folks? It's your buddy Fatal Roddy type. We're going to be doing the SmackDown review. We started off tonight with John Cena coming out. Strangely enough, he had the Bludgeon Brothers graphic. Bruh. Because somebody in the back got their buttons screwed up. He gets in the ring, says he's still trying to find his road to WrestleMania. So apparently John Cena wants to shoehorn his way into the Fatal Five way at Fastlane. Shane McMahon then comes out. He talks up Fastlane and says that if Cena wants to get in, he's going to have to earn his spot. Daniel Bryan comes out, says that's an excellent idea, and in order for him to make his spot at the match at Fastlane, he's going to have to face AJ Styles later tonight. So if Cena wins, it's now going to be a six-pack challenge. Jesus Christ, how long do we have until Fastlane? We're going to have like 20 people. Might as well just have a battle royal. Which brings us to our first match, Sami Zayn versus Baron Corbin. Kevin Owens is at the announcer's table. This is an okay match. There was a short backstage segment where Daniel Bryan and Shane McMahon were commenting on Kevin Owens being at ringside. There was a good bit of back and forth between Corbin and Zayn. Dolph Ziggler comes out through the crowd and super kicks Kevin Owens and then hides out at ringside. Baron Corbin gets the end of days on Sami Zayn for the win. After the match, Dolph Ziggler runs in and gives the zigzag to Baron Corbin. Dolph Ziggler needs to drop this record scratch, silence, then his theme music. It was okay when he first started and his music would play, then we got the record scratch and he come out to silence, but it just doesn't make sense anymore. If he's repackaged, why not just have your theme music? The record scratch kind of points out stopping something, but we're in silence. It just opens up with a record scratch, wait, then music. That don't make sense. Anyways, whatever. Then we got backstage, Daniel Bryant tells Shane McMahon he's going to go home to see the wife and kids. Okay, cool, whatever. We then have Ruby Riot versus Naomi, with the rest of the Riot Squad, Becky Lynch, and Charlotte Flair at ringside. What? Well, this is different. We've never seen these six people in the same f***ing area before. Jesus Christ, I swear to God. <laughs> Anyways, Naomi slaps Ruby Riot, she rolls out of the ring, and then both teams face off at each other and start talking and we go to a commercial. That was kind of pointless. At one point, Naomi and Ruby Riot kick each other square in the head, knocking each other out for a bit. But Ruby Riot got the riot kick on Naomi for the pin. So I'm just going to take a stab in the dark that we're probably going to have Becky Lynch versus somebody in the Riot Squad next week. Seriously, this is ridiculous. We've seen these same six people facing each other for the past two plus months or so since the Riot Squad got onto SmackDown. It's ridiculous. Just like last night. It was an excuse just to get everybody in the women's division in one spot at one time. We then waste a bunch of time with Brizongo and some dude from the show Unsolved plucking his show. It was kind of ridiculous, kind of stupid. I really didn't pay much attention to it. Anyways, the New Day come out, and they cut a promo about Fastlane, and then for some reason, Big E needs his testicles sprayed down. What the fuck? Then the Usos come out, they cut a promo on the New Day, running them down, and saying that WrestleMania 34 is going to be their time. Biggie gets tired of Usos running their mouths, like some of us do, and runs them down. The two teams square up, and then the Bludgeon Brothers come out. They walk into the ring with their sledgehammers, and the New Day and the Usos leave the ring. This would be a seriously better championship match if the Bludgeon Brothers were involved. We've only seen the New Day and the Usos 10,847 eight times. We then have a backstage interview with Bobby Roode where he brings up the once used top 10 list. Never has it been brought up since it came out. Never has it been updated. Just used once. 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 Then Randy Orton comes out and says he's going to be running through Bobby Roode to become the U.S. champion. Okay, fine. That would be a good match. But can we please drop the top 10 list or at least use the damn thing? Update it. Do something with it. We saw it done once. It was never brought up after that. It's been mentioned. It's never been updated. It's just fucking ridiculous. I swear. We then have Aiden English versus Shinsuke Nakamura. We finally see Shinsuke Nakamura back after I don't know how long. I think it was Royal Rumble when we saw him last. No, wait, no. He showed up on SmackDown like once, but never wrestled. But anyways, he's wrestling. This is a pretty decent match, albeit kind of short. Rusev interfered with the super kick to Shinsuke Nakamura. There was a bit of back and forth between Aiden English and Nakamura. Nakamura lined up Aiden English for the Kinshasa, nailed it, and got the pin. After the match, as Nakamura is leaving the ring, John Cena's music hits. He comes out, and as he's passing Nakamura, he points up at the WrestleMania sign, I guess telling Nakamura that he'll be seeing him at WrestleMania. Which brings us to our main event, AJ Styles versus John Cena. This is a pretty good match. AJ Styles took a really nasty hit off of a DDT from the, I think it was the second rope. There were a ton of two counts from both competitors, a lot of back and forth. 
John Cena got the AA for a two count. AJ Styles got the phenomenal forearm for a two count. The fight spills out to ringside. John Cena tried to charge AJ Styles, but he ducked out of the way, and Cena hit the ring steps hard. Shortly after, AJ Styles got the AA on AJ Styles through the announcer's table, got back in the ring and was trying to get him counted out, but AJ Styles got back in before the count of 10. By this time, John Cena's getting pissed. AJ Styles was able to get the calf crusher on Cena, but he reversed it, got him up into the AA, and got the pin. After the match, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn come out from backstage, and Baron Corbin comes in through the crowd, and they jump John Cena and AJ Styles. Then Dolph Ziggler comes out, he knocks out Owens, Zayn, and Corbin, and as we're going off the air, we have AJ Styles, Dolph Ziggler, and John Cena sitting in the ring, then Ziggler attacks Styles. When Ziggler gets back up, John Cena gives him the AA, and we close off the show. I'm not sure if anything else happened after that. It looked like something was about to, but we don't know. This is an okay SmackDown. There was just a lot that really frustrated me about tonight. It wasn't as talk heavy as Raw was last night, but there's a lot of repetitiveness in SmackDown. We're seeing the same people over and over and over again. Like I said, we're probably going to be seeing Becky Lynch versus somebody in the Riot Squad, and I'm pretty much going to bet we're going to have a six-man tag match between Baron Corbin, Sami Zayn, and Kevin Owens versus John Cena, AJ Styles, and Dolph Ziggler or some combination of those six. I just wish we would mix things up a little bit more and bring a lot of these stories to a close. It's just repetitive and repetitive, and it's just, um, I don't have anything. Sorry, York. (coughs) It's just getting old. Maybe, maybe after WrestleMania, we'll mix up the rosters and we'll get new stuff happening. But... We'll just have to see. We're not even at WrestleMania yet. We're not even after February yet. And everything is getting very stale. But that'll do it for the SmackDown review. Leave a comment down below. What did you thought of tonight's SmackDown? What you thought of this video? If you liked it, please give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to share and subscribe. I've been Fatal Roadie. You've been awesome. Thank you very much for watching. And remember, if it's too loud, you're too old. See ya.